There's a Toronto-based ice cream chain now expanding into the U.S. That's a good thing. Too bad the company's name has some Christians fuming. The Sweet Jesus Ice Cream Company is receiving worldwide attention these days. Alas, the publicity has nothing to do with what's on the menu and everything to do with its name. As you might imagine, Sweet Jesus has upset some Christians who don't like the Lord's name taken in vain or, for that matter, to be used as a marketing gimmick to sell ice cream. So it is that on one website, Citizen Go, it has collected more than 11,000 signatures on a petition calling for the Sweet Jesus owners to, quote, issue a public apology for misusing the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and change the name and branding of your franchise, end quote. But like that tree planted by the river, the owners of Sweet Jesus shall not be moved. In a statement, Sweet Jesus co-founder Andrew Richmond noted, quote, After a lot of thought, we have decided that we will not make a change, end quote. And Richmond downplays the idea that the company name was meant to be purposefully offensive, quote, Sweet Jesus is an honest reflection of our experiences and that of our customers and how they react when they try our product. In our experience, the majority of people understand that we're not trying to make a statement about religion, end quote. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and call bullshit on that particular statement. I mean, really, how many people bite into a butterscotch cone from this shop and yell, Sweet Jesus, thanks to the resulting taste bud euphoria? However, that's not to say I'm keen on some sort of M103-like law preventing retailers and marketers from using religious icons or terminology in their names. In this regard, I'd much rather let the free market decide. Look, if you have a craving for ice cream and you don't care one whit what the name of the shop is, fine. Sweet Jesus it is then. But if you do find that moniker offensive, then keep walking. I'm sure there's a Baskin Robbins nearby. Even so, I do wish I had the financial resources to conduct a social experiment regarding this issue, which is to say it would be most curious to see what the reaction would be if one were to open a store called (laughs) Sweet Prophet Muhammad Ice Cream. I mean, I just wonder what if the same people who are telling angry Christians to take a chill pill regarding the Sweet Jesus name would suddenly switch gears on the fly and start screaming about cultural insensitivity and calling for a name change with that store. In fact, you may recall that last month we reported on the controversy over a painting at Toronto's Ontario College of Art and Design. The artwork depicted the outline of a nude female on an Islamic prayer mat, and it was promptly removed from display after various Muslim students at the college complained. Even though the artist herself is Muslim, even though art, as we are told by the tall forehead types, is sometimes meant to shock and offend. Well, sorry, when it came to that prayer mat artwork, this non-halal potato was just too hot to handle for the courageous artistes running Ontario College of Art and Design. Then again, the folks at OCAD are likely only too wary what can happen when artwork offends certain Muslims. We've all laid witness to the barbarism that erupted in light of those Danish cartoons and the Charlie Hebdo caricatures, and in the Department of Comparing Apples to Apples, when it comes to the food service business, just consider this. Church's Chicken, when it expanded into the Middle East, was rebranded as Texas Chicken. This was done to avoid offending local religious sensibilities. Yes, merely using the word church can be a non-starter in an Islamic Republic. And that's why I had a jolly good laugh regarding the headline in the New York Post pertaining to the Sweet Jesus controversy, namely, Christians wage war against Sweet Jesus. Wow! If you call an online petition and an attempted boycott, along with some terse letters to the editor and a few nasty phone calls, a war, well, it would seem to me that in this day and age in which violence or the implied threat of violence is what tends to move the needle, then devout Christians are quite ill-equipped to wage war in defense of their faith. It must be that whole turning the other cheek thing. 
For the Rebel Dot Media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, if you heard the Rebel has a brand new app, please download the Rebel app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.